Hello my loves, what's up, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a new pick a card reading, but before we hop into it, I wanted to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, which is Skillshare. You guys know I love Skillshare, and if you have not heard of them before, they're essentially a huge online platform where you guys can browse classes upon almost any subject that you desire to learn about. I am always like blown away by the amount of classes that they have on there. Recently, I've been taking this class all about productivity. It's like a productivity masterclass. I've been trying to get more productive in my day. And there's this one on there by Ali Abdal and it's so phenomenal. He breaks down a bunch of myths that we believe about time and productivity and how to actually create a more productive schedule so we can get more done in our day. And the way that he breaks this down is really insightful and he really gives you the tools to help you be more productive in your day. And you'd be surprised about how much you can actually get done in one day. So I highly recommend checking out this class. It was really good. And they also have classes on there about pretty much any other subject that you could desire to learn about, whether that be filmmaking, photography, art, jewelry making, fashion design, pretty much anything under the sun that you want to learn about. And if you guys are interested in checking them out, the first thousand people to click the link down below in the description box get a free trial of Skillshare. So definitely go check that out. First thousand people to click that link and get a free trial. And I highly recommend it. You can't go wrong. I mean, learning new things and just expanding your knowledge base is one of the most invaluable things on this planet. So I highly recommend going to check them out and huge shout out to Skillshare again for sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, let's hop right into today's picky card reading. Hello my loves, what's up, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a new pick a card reading and this one is all about who you really are, who your soul really is, so deep down inside. Who are you really? Um, I'm really excited about this reading. If you guys are new to pick a card readings, I'm gonna give you guys a quick little rundown of how they work. So over here we have pile number one, two, three, four, and five. So you guys can take a moment, pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you are the most drawn towards. Then once you're done choosing your pile, you can then scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that's linked to your specific card. And then you guys can skip ahead and watch your personal reading all about who you really are deep down inside. If you guys like to choose with crystals on these cards, let's go ahead and add some crystals on these cards. All right, my loves, if you guys like to choose with crystals, here are our crystal options. So over here we have some gold stone, and then here we have some rainbow fluorite, and then we have an amethyst stalactite, and then we have a quartz uh, moon, and then over here we have some crimson fire quartz, which is basically iron inside of quartz, and it creates this really beautiful, like, heated, or um, really beautiful red color when it is heated. So those are our five options today. Again, take a moment, pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you are the most drawn towards. Then once you're done choosing your pile, you can then scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that's linked to your specific card. And then you guys can skip ahead and watch your personal reading all for who you are deep down inside. So with that being said, without further ado, let's hop right into it. All right, so group number one, if you guys chose this pile, this is gonna be your reading, so let's hop right into it. All right, so group number one, here's what we have for you guys. We have the elephant and the panther and the ship and the star. So I'm getting a really magical energy from this right off the bat, and I also wanna mention that both of these um, animal archetype cards that we have are both fire signs, and so there's a lot of fiery energy that we're getting from this group. Uh, so group one, the fire energy is someone who is very passionate. They have a lot of drive and motivation, especially when there is a certain goal to achieve. And so for you guys, there's a lot of passion, a lot of creativity that is um, built into your soul. You are very passionate and a very creative person. And you'll notice that you have a very, uh, lack of energy, a very much like low energy whenever you're not doing something creative or doing something out of passion. So that's one thing that I notice with people who have a lot of fire energy, they get very low and they fall into anxiety and depression. And a lot of the times fire signs can also be very prone to, um, to like a buildup of, uh, of anxiety, I've noticed, because whenever they're not like burning with passion and desire and moving towards a goal, like fire signs are very goal oriented and they need to be kind of like, you know, sparked in order to feel alive, right? So whenever there's not a spark, sometimes we can get a lack of energy, a lack of motivation, but that's actually a blessing. I want you guys to know that you actually have like such a big blessing in you because that just goes to show 
that you are somebody who at your core, in your soul, you are somebody who's supposed to be living out a creative passion. You are supposed to be living in a spark, right? So you have a lot of energy inside of you, tons of energy. And whenever that energy is not being utilized towards um, like a goal and a spark, then of course, it's going to build up in anxiety because we have an excess of energy that has nowhere to go and it kind of just sits in us circling around so for you guys that's one thing i'm definitely noticing off the bat since we have two fire cards here and that's just something that is very prominent i notice with fire energy so also i just want to say fire energy oh my gosh the amount that they can accomplish and get done when they are following their spark the amount of creativity and the amount of impact they can have when they are lit up and feeling energized like whoo you guys have like magic and like special energy within you i'll just say that right off the bat like whoo also another thing that i'm noticing um the elephant is super caring like the way that they care for their family and their young my goodness, so powerful, such a strong energy. They have such big hearts and they'll do anything. Like you can see how this elephant's missing part of his tusk right here. Like they will put up a fight and it's interesting that we have the panther right next. Like they will put up a fight to protect who they love, right? So if anybody's like harming somebody that you love or doing something wrong to somebody that you love, like, oh my gosh, you guys are the type that go above and beyond to show your care and compassion for the people that are close to you, the people that mean a lot to you, okay? And the panther also says that. It's like you really step up to the plate um, when people need you and you're not afraid to raise your voice, especially if it's a situation where you need to stand up for people that you love, okay? Um, the elephant is also incredibly magical. They're usually very good listeners just because they have like the ears and um, their senses are usually a lot stronger than most. So I would say that you're a very highly like sensitive person, but not in the sensitive necessarily in the emotional way. I mean more of like your senses are very heightened. Like your ears, you probably hear very well. Um, and if not, then that would fall into your other senses, right? But the, your senses, there's something about your senses that are very strong. Maybe your touch, the sense of touch is very strong. Maybe your sense of smell is very strong. Maybe your sense of taste is very strong. Maybe your eyesight is super good, right? So usually with the elephant, it means that there's some sort of sense that is very strong. And this could even go with the senses of like psychic intuition too. There's some sort of sense that you have that is above and beyond as we can see he even has like the little uh, gem on his third eye so this can also go for psychic senses your senses are incredibly powerful and probably above average okay um let's see what else also um panther energy is also incredibly magical and they're usually um kind of more nocturnal so that you guys might also have a tendency to be more alive or feel more in your environment when there is like dim lighting or during the nighttime you might notice that your creativity comes out at night i'm also noticing here that your soul really desires to have a goal the fact that we have the ship and the star the ship symbolizes travel uh you guys might be someone who's okay with being a bit nomadic you, you're also probably somebody who is okay taking spontaneous um, making spontaneous decisions. Fire and the ship, this is like ruling spontaneous decisions. This is like you guys are somebody who at a whim will go across the world if the opportunity presented itself. It's like, yes, I will take on that opportunity. I will go there. I will do that. This is also a huge dedication to making your goals happen, especially if it's something that's very important to you. Anything that is important to you, group one, is like top of the list priority um, and the star symbolizes having a goal so the ship like following kind of like the north star sort of situation it's kind of reminding me of that and this means that you guys will go lengths to reach an important goal for you once you know what that is and it's also saying that you guys have a deep purpose and your soul is kind of calling you towards that so you guys' souls feel like there's some sort of bigger purpose. 
um, and your soul came to this planet to fulfill a bigger purpose. And it might be a journey to kind of find out what that purpose is, but there is some sort of calling. And I guess I'm, I'm guessing that you guys probably feel it deep down inside. Like there's something that I'm supposed to do, but like, what is it? Maybe some of you guys have figured it out already and you're on that path and you, and you're, you're following that. But then others of you might just feel deep down inside. Like, I know that there's something here that I'm supposed to be doing that's important, but maybe we're still on the journey of finding that. Okay. But the star definitely resembles that you guys came here and you guys have like an impact that you want to bring to the world. It's kind of like being a way shower. I would also assume that you guys are incredibly intelligent. Like elephants are incredibly intelligent. Even panthers are incredibly intelligent. Um, but you guys are like wise beyond your years. Like the elephants are known for being wise beyond their years. And I would not be surprised if a lot of people come to you saying like, oh my gosh, you're very mature for your age and you seem more like an older soul. And that would make sense considering that you guys have the elephant here and also the star. It's like you guys came here to be like a way shower because the stars a lot of the times are like maps, right? And so you guys are almost kind of like that as well to where your purpose is going to be something along the lines of being a way shower, being a beacon for other people. Um, and kind of like, yeah, being sort of a, more of a role model type of figure. Okay. So that's what I'm getting there. You guys also might really get excited about learning about history because elephant is very connected to that as well. Elephants are also connected to books, learning, um, and things like that. So you guys might notice that you're also called to that. And, um, also their ivory tusks there. It's really sticking out to me, the ivory tusks here, and those are incredibly valuable. And so it's almost like you guys came here with some sort of like valuable talent. There's something that I think that you guys are naturally good at that you should be utilizing more. That's also coming up in here. Um, the teeth are also really sticking out to me just cause they're very similar to the tusks and this talks about achieving and being able to conquer anything. I think that you guys are more powerful than you think, like way more powerful than you think. Like elephants, they're super sweet, but guess what? If you get on the, their bad side, oh my gosh, could they ever like crush you, right? So there's also this power within you that I think on the surface, you're like very caring, very nice, um, very wise. But internally, it's like there's a there's a power there, you know, there's a there's a deep power. So that is what we're getting here right off the bat. We're also going to shuffle some more cards to get some more info on this for you guys. So I have this other archetype deck. We're going to get a couple cards from here. So we have the gem coming up. Oh, my gosh. Have fun. Let's see what else we get. Ooh, like basically all the cards fell out. We're going to reshuffle that. Feeling this one. We also have the box. So there's more beneath the surface. Like when you first meet people, um, they might look at the surface of you first, but there's so much depth to you um, beyond what maybe you even realize too. And that's why we have the gem too. It's almost like there's so many layers to kind of get through. I think you're a very multifaceted person to where you couldn't even really explain yourself to somebody within like one day. There's so many layers to you. And I think that you're going to notice how many layers that you have as well as you keep going and kind of realizing more and more about how valuable that you are deep down inside. Um, there's also something like a gift that you guys were born with. This keeps coming up. So the gem also kind of talks about um, a hidden gift and the box also kind of talks about that because it's like kind of opening, opening up, right? So there's like a hidden talent that I think that you guys have, okay? This kind of keeps coming up for, for, for me when I'm looking at this group that there's some sort of hidden talent, some sort of hidden surprise that you guys have and it's kind of waiting to be uncovered. And again, some of you guys might've already realized 
what this talent is. Like maybe it's with art, maybe it's with your intuition, maybe it's with who knows, right? Um, only you guys will know and be able to find that out. But I'm definitely getting that there's some sort of special unique gift that you guys have. Okay. Um, also realizing your value. I think your soul really wants you to realize your own value because it's like the gem is like in this rough, right? So it's, almost, it's reminding me of the story of Aladdin where he's like the diamond in the rough. That's you guys. So when you first came to this planet, you know, you probably feel like, mm, maybe I'm like pretty average. Maybe what, I don't know. But there is this inner knowing that's like your soul is like, I want to do something great. I want to do something big. And it's waiting to be kind of uncovered, waiting to be discovered. There's something about you that's kind of like waiting to be discovered. So that's going to be part of your journey here on earth is kind of discovering that. I also find that like when I look at the box card, you guys are very curious people. You guys are somebody who if there's like an unknown box sitting right in front of you, you guys are probably going to be thinking like, what's in there? I want to know what's in that. So there's a huge curiosity with you guys, especially when it comes to finding out mysteries or finding out the unknown or getting to know deep stuff. You guys like the deep stuff. It's like, sure, surface level stuff is, is fine, whatever, but you guys like to get to the core of something. You guys like to get to the root of something. You guys, like, you guys want to discover the core of things, especially when it comes to people, when it comes to things that you're learning about, when it comes to mysteries of the world. It seems like you guys are kind of very interested and very curious. There's also another thing about the box where it also resembles um, needing to peel back societal uh, kind of conditionings to find our own unique truth. So you guys might also go through a time in your life where you need to break away from the constructs or belief systems that you were raised with and kind of need to come out and find your own truth and find your own light. The box also talks about that too. So it's kind of like the external world is almost like a little bit of an illusion that we need to break free of in order to discover our true selves. Okay. So it's another thing that you'll realize about yourself is to find your own truth is going to be very important to you this lifetime. So with that being said, let's get some more cards on here for you guys. Ooh, we got the silver wolf. And we got the four directions. So it's really interesting that you guys got the silver wolf, uh, wolf, can't even talk, because it's also really connected to what I was talking about earlier about you guys having very heightened senses with the elephant. So the silver wolf also talks about heightened senses. You'll notice that as you get older, your gut instincts are just like incredibly powerful and possibly even like as you were younger, you might notice that your gut instincts have always been extremely powerful and that your intuition's always been extremely powerful. So the silver wolf also just kind of reiterates that same sort of message about you guys have extremely heightened intuition and silver connects with the moon and the moon is very connected to intuition and emotions. So this is almost like letting emotions be your guide, letting uh, your gut instincts be your guide. Like you guys have incredibly strong and powerful intuitions and gut instincts about things to where I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys are like somewhat psychic um, as well. We also have the four directions here and this can sometimes symbolize that you guys are multifaceted and multi-talented. You guys can um, do many different things. Like you guys don't just have one particular niche. It seems like you guys are mul very multifaceted and you know, a lot of people are, but in your guys's case, I'm getting sort of a uniqueness here where you guys are probably born with a few different um, interests or talents. So I think your interests go in multiple areas and you are somebody who kind of combines them to create something brand new. So you almost combine different sort of like talents that most people probably wouldn't think about combining and you guys just kind of do it and it makes you into a very unique person with multiple interests. It can get confusing at times when you are somebody who is like this because I'm somebody who's like this and I find that it sometimes gets confusing because um, 
it's easy to get lost about, okay, what direction do I actually go in? Just because I have so many interests, I have so many callings, what do I actually pursue? The key to the four directions card and this sort of personality type is combining, finding ways to kind of combine them and take all those directions, take all of those callings and channel them kind of into one thing. You don't need to go in just one direction, right? It's like, let's combine it and have it be a brand new thing, have it be something totally different than the regular schmegular. <laughs> Basically, you guys are not just regular schmegular <laughs> people. You guys are like, there's something bigger here. There is like, yeah, there's just more, more facets, more facets, facets to you than you realize, which is also why you guys have the gem because it's multifaceted, right? We have all these facets. We have all these different um, angles and uh, different cuts that make our unique shape, but they shine differently in different lights, right? So that's another thing about the gem card there. So with that being said, let's go into our next deck of cards here. Oh, I also want to say we have a four here with the 13 on the silver, silver wolf. We have a 13 and then we have a 22. Both of those in numerology equal a four. So that's really significant, um, which means you guys are very like, uh, it can mean that you guys are, oh my gosh, look at this guys, look what I just flipped over, it's a 4-4. Four, four. There's tons of 4-4 four, four energy and also there's another card that just fell out when I was talking, I don't know if you guys heard that and it's number 40 on it. Oh my gosh, there's so much 4 energy, I swear to God if this card has a 4 on it, I'm gonna, ah, yep, okay. Lots of four energy. Let's talk about it. So this kind of means that you're building something. You guys want something impactful for one. Fours signify um, a larger impact, something that is very sustainable, that lasts, something that's very solid, creating a very solid foundation. And it's usually having like a footprint that lasts is kind of what it means. It's like building something and leaving a footprint that actually lasts. And I'm kind of almost looking at this land between, and this kind of makes sense. So you guys are kind of like this bridging, bridging something new, like innovators. You guys are natural innovators, and you're kind of creating a new environment. You're here to kind of create like a new pathway, um, a new beacon for people to follow, a path that has been not walked before, that you guys can lead, that you guys are natural leaders, Okay, group one, it's no, no wonder that you guys chose group one because um, the number ones are also just natural leaders. So, wow. I'm getting a spiritual, like this spiritual understanding from you guys, group one. I'm getting like there's a slight um, spiritual calling here between the star and the spirit of gratitude and the fact that we have lots of cards talking about intuition and also the divine matrix, like definitely picking up on some psychic or spiritual energy here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you guys, your soul is very, sorry guys, the camera cut out and I'm not sure what exactly I was talking about when it cut out, but I was basically just talking about this card and how I'm noticing that this card right here is very connected to ancient India and it's making me feel like your soul in particular is very connected to those ancient times of ancient India and it's no wonder that we also had the elephant with the bindi kind of on his third eye. Um, I kind of thought a little bit about ancient India when I looked at that card and then we have the spirit of gratitude which is heavily calling me towards that and we also have sort of the crown chakra that opened with this kind of lotus flower and it's also on the third eye of this person. So this is making me feel like, again, it's reiterating the fact that you guys are incredibly spiritually in tune, okay? So you have a lot of like psychic gifts, um, but you're also very connected to ancient India and being kind of more of a yogi. And I'm getting that you guys, your soul, since it's very connected to that and those times and that energy, it's going to be very important for you guys to kind of have like a meditation practice or maybe even a yoga practice in this lifetime because your soul is just incredibly connected to like ancient India and the surrounding areas of, of that. I'm definitely getting India though and like Tibet. Tibet and India come to my mind when I'm looking at that card. And you guys are basically like, yeah, a bridge to a new wave of thought on this planet. And we also have divine matrix. So 
your soul has come here with a plan and it's no wonder we had the star which connects to maps and then we have divine matrix which is kind of like creating these like portals and the, this whole card like there's lots of cards here that talk about how your soul specifically desires to create a new path for humanity one of peace one of gratitude one of calmness one of new direction new thought um and awakening the deeper talents in other people as well so you guys do have a pretty big purpose your soul is definitely coming through lots with how incredibly like um talented you guys are and how you're kind of here to shift the consciousness of yourself and then of kind of like humanity this is definitely shifting consciousness vibes um your soul in this lifetime you will have times of like raising up your consciousness i mean everyone does let's just be honest everyone has times of like raising up their consciousness but you guys i think are supposed to get more deeper into a spiritual practice and sort of awaken the chakras especially your crown and third eye is what i'm getting from these cards so um that's a deeper aspect of yourself for sure you're very connected to ancient indian very connected to um that sort of lifestyle and your soul definitely craves meditation and time to go within find inner peace and inner reflection that's going to be very important for you guys group one um to just incorporate that into your practice. So with that being said, we're going to take our last Oracle deck here and we're gonna get any last info on these cards. Or actually, we do have tarot cards right after this. Oh my God, I lied. We have tarot cards that still do after this. It's not just an Oracle card reading today. We have tarot cards, but these are our last Oracle cards. Okay, so we have the Bone Collector, ooh. And then we have um, the Balancing Act here. We have an 11 right here and a one. Oh my gosh, you guys. The amount of ones and fours, group one, out of this world. I just want to say that right now, out of this world. So it's interesting that we have a ship here too and you guys had a ship on the other one. You guys definitely have a deeper purpose that you guys need to follow this lifetime. And you guys are going to get like little signs and symbols of following that. Your intuition is very strong. Um, your ability to find balance. You also, okay, this lifetime, your soul craves to find balance and you're going to find it through meditation and yoga, hugely, like, or through following a deeper spiritual practice. It's going to be very important for you guys in order to find your purpose and follow your path is adding in that spiritual side we also have Bone Collector right here. Um, and this reminds me of like collecting ancient wisdom, discovering ancient wisdom. You guys are going to be, or are, I should say, you guys are someone who is sort of unraveling the mysteries of life and is very curious about the mysteries of life. Like the meaning of life is probably something that you ponder a lot. Um, how our universe really works, where we really came from and where we're going are big questions. Like you guys are natural philosophers and natural um, souls that are interested in self-discovery, self-mastery and discovery of our world, discovery of hidden knowledge really is what I'm getting from that. So... With that being said, we're gonna go into our tarot cards to get any last info on this reading for you guys. So group one, let's see what we get for you guys. I'm also going to up the brightness here just cause it's getting a little dark. So group one, what do we have for you guys? We have the Wheel of Fortune, the Ace of Wands. I'm not even surprised right now. Um, it's no wonder we're getting more fire energy from that Ace of Wands. I would not be surprised if you guys have um, fire in your top three uh, major zodiac things and we also have another wand card coming out <laughs> and we also have the hermit oh, I'm not even surprised about that one either and let's see what these other two are okay so we also have the two of swords and we also have the ace of cups how wonderful okay so 
when you guys are following your passion, there is going to be such sure direction, you guys, group one. This is, your lifetime is about following your own spark, your own creativity, doing something innovative, doing something like kind of on your own and leading your own, creating your own path. You guys are natural creators. And when you're not doing your own creative stuff and making your own decisions, you're going to feel very lost and unbalanced. Okay. Um, you're also people that I'm getting, you're a little bit private, or at least you're very picky and choosy when it comes to who you open up to. Picky and choosy with who you allow into your life and who you fully open up to. And again, you're just somebody who, who's here for like self-mastery. You're here to find out deep knowledge about yourself and of the world. And you're very much like a solo soul. Like you don't need tons of people by you to feel comfortable, group one. You're very much independent. Like you're incredibly independent. Um, incredibly spontaneous as well. Like when you have a passion, it's like, yep, let's go for it. Let's do it. We have a lot of fire energy here with the dragon in this card too. Um, and then we also have that wheel of fortune here. So you guys kind of take life as it comes. And I think that you guys are going to be handed tons of different experiences in your lifetime. Like your soul is here to experience. And the reason why that is, is because your soul is here for like self mastery and discovery of big things on this planet. And we cannot do that without experiencing tons of different things. So you'll notice like even by the time you're 30, you've probably experienced more than what most six-year-olds have experienced. Like you're going to experience more than most people, which makes you mature lots faster. And it also helps you kind of discover more about the planet. Because again, like I said, the more that we experience, the more knowledge we have under our belt because we've experienced more things. So you might notice that you experience um, heartbreak at an early age. You might experience great loss at an early age. You might experience all sorts of different things at an early age. Um, or like certain hardships, right? Overcoming certain obstacles, having to do certain things at a young age. And this is to prepare you um, and get you in alignment with what that purpose is, okay? And then the Ace of Wands here, this talks about all about the spontaneous kind of creating your own reality. You guys are, are your soul needs to be the creator. Your soul is very creative and your soul desires to be the shot caller, I guess, of your life. Like you're the one that calls the shots, basically. Your soul desires to be that. Your soul desires to be in the creative forefront, creative seat. And you don't like to be told what to do because that, again, makes you feel out of balance. Um, your balance comes from you guys following your heart, your soul, your gut instincts, those spontaneous little inklings and sparks that you get because your soul speaks to you in sparks and you'll get these sparks and then that'll be kind of how you tell the right path. We also have the Ace of Cups right here. Um, you're here to fill your own cup, basically. Your soul is here to live a very fulfilling life with tons of experiences in it. So... Be prepared, you guys, group one, because your life is going to be tons of experiences. It's going to be tons of good, you know, tons of bad, tons of things to just experience. And it's not going to be like, like I said, like tons of bad. I think overall, when I look at this, like you guys are living a very, very happy life, especially when you follow your creativity and your sparks and your gut instincts, it's going to lead you on a very, very good path. Okay. But there are going to be situations like, for example, you're going to be in certain relationships that are just going to be like, whatever you're like, this is just kind of the experience that we get when we, when we have someone who's incredibly wise, all of the wise people did not come from life being very kind to them. And I'm not saying life is going to be unkind to you. I don't want you guys to take it that way because life is in a way being very kind to you by giving you tons of experience. And, um, there's always going to be really good outcomes of negative situations. So when you're going through a big hurdle or obstacle, life's going to very much reward you. And your reward is the amount of growth and the amount of new direction that you're going in. And I think it's always going to leave you with gifts, right? And that's why I also have the box and the gem. It's like the diamond in the rough. 
whenever you're going through a rough time, there's always a freaking magical gem that is waiting within that moment that you're gonna notice. So for example, if you're going through a bad breakup or bad relationship that was really toxic, for example, life would then reward you with, bam, okay, well, there's your soulmate. And then through that um, experience, you are going to realize why all of this had to happen because you're gonna gain so much knowledge and then it'll help you push forward in life, in your career, in guiding others, in being like a way shower, being that beacon of light for others and being like, okay, well, I learned so much through my experience. Let me share that and guide um, other people, right? And so Ace of Cups is all about living your most fulfilling life. And the most fulfilling life comes with challenges. So there will be challenges, but overall, your soul is here to live a very fulfilling life and it will be fulfilling. Okay, group one, incredibly fulfilling. I must say, incredibly fulfilling. Um, you're here to really make stuff happen, make your dreams happen and come to life. You're here for a bigger purpose like that. So that is what I see here for you guys, group number one. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future. And if so, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. All right, so group number two, here's what we have for you guys. We have the bench, the sun, um, blindfold. We also have the crow and the horse as your guys' kind of like spirit animal archetypes. So for you guys, wow, what a freaking balance and a fun, magical sort of soul that you guys have deep down inside. So. The crow and the horse. The crow is a symbol of magic. It's also associated with the element of air. The horse is a symbol of motivation, willpower, determination, and conquering, and it is associated with the earth. So these two elements are opposing opposite elements, but they provide balance to each other. So for you guys, you have a very good balance between the spiritual, which is the crow, they're super, um, associated with spirituality and um, hidden, you know, magic and occult and all that kind of stuff. Whereas the Horus is very much determination, goal oriented, and can conquer almost anything. Honestly, can conquer anything. So you guys have a very powerful soul that is probably very attracted to things like Harry Potter or magic or. Um, esoteric stuff, the occult, mysteries, uncovering mysteries on our planet, stuff like that. Um, and the horse symbolizes that you guys can do anything this lifetime. You guys will conquer your goals. And so you have a very old soul that has probably been through so much to where you can achieve anything. Even if you do not realize that you have that innate ability within you, you guys, your soul is here to achieve and to do anything. And anytime that you feel out of balance, coming back towards a balance between your magical self and your physical self, you guys will be able to accomplish anything with the how those two complement each other and how those two go right hand in hand for you this lifetime. Once you have a balance of those both, you can do anything. If you get too far into your spirituality and you lose your horse energy and you're not putting too much into your horse energy, which is the um, action taking energy, you're gonna fall into more of the you know, spiritual energy, but it'll be hard to get things done. Whereas if you fall too much into the do, do, do physical energy, you're going to lose the magical spark that you guys have within you. So there needs to be kind of like a balance and your soul craves the balance between magical, um, uncovering mysteries, sort of like finding deeper parts of yourself, the subconscious. So meditation, for example, is gonna be really important for you guys. And if you do not have a meditation routine yet, I would highly suggest having a meditation routine because you guys have this like internal magic that can be accessed when you guys go within. The crow is all about internal reflection, right? And the mind mentality, because it's associated with air, so it's all about the mind. So going deep within your own mind, being able to reflect within, is going to help you so much to find that balance while also taking action towards those big goals that you have. So for example, if you have um, a big goal to like go to Egypt and research something or do, do whatever, 
being able to act on that or if you guys desire to like create a YouTube channel, for example, like this one and do, uh, do your spiritual stuff on there, like that's another just example. It's about taking action, but also having the balance of coming back towards your internal spiritual self, meditation, calming down, reflection, because you guys are also going to notice that you grow so much on reflection. Like your mind almost just fixes itself when you do reflection. Like if you're reflecting on something that's confusing to you and you just have moments of silence and going inward, you're going to find your answer immediately. Like your guys' mind and spirit is so developed your intuition is so developed like you guys are definitely empaths and have a very strong intuition and that side of you is so developed to where if you have any problem it's like just taking time out which is the bench card taking time out and going within into your own mind which is the blindfold so closing out the physical and just going within it's like you guys illuminate any answer that you could ever find like you guys probably get downloads you guys probably get like um intuitive hits that just come to you that just make so much sense like you guys probably are people that have a lot of shower thoughts when you're in the shower and your mind just wanders and discovers new things and you're like i'm learning just by thinking <laughs> you don't even have to read anything you're like learning just by thinking and being right you're like attaining knowledge and it's because you guys have such an old soul that has done so much in previous lifetimes that your consciousness is super developed. And if you just give your physical self time to tap into that conscious and subconscious, you're going to be reawakening um, knowledge that you've learned in past lives that just comes to you so easily. Like you guys are very intuitive and very, um, in tune with the other side which is also again why we have blindfold it's like you guys are also very good at seeing what other people are thinking hearing between the lines you know if somebody's telling you a story and they're you know kind of skipping over certain things or if they're telling you you know how they feel it's like you can hear the words that are unsaid you can you can read between the lines and you're like oh i know what you're actually trying to say here like or you know if they're even sort of lying to you, you can, you can see that, you know, you can hear that, you can pick up on that. You don't need to see physical evidence to understand what's really going on. It's like you have such strong intuitions and such strong feelings. Although one thing with the blindfold, I will say, this also comes with a little bit of um, untrusting energy sometimes, or you'll notice that if you're too much in the physical, your intuition might be a little bit off. If you're too focused on the physicality of things, you're too focused on like, oh my God, like they did this and then they did this and then they did this and you're, and you're way too much focused on the physical, you'll notice that you're, you're then blindfolding your intuition. Whereas again, it's about the balance. Whenever you guys are in that balance between you know, picking up on the physical but also the balance of inner reflection and tapping into your own soul, this is when you're going to have the best intuition and you'll have the answer to almost anything, which is why we have the sun card here, because this is all about illuminating. You guys are here to illuminate. You guys are here to discover truth, to express truth, to express your authenticity, right? And even the crow standing upon this orb, right? Which is your spirituality is sort of like illuminating this lifetime. You're really supposed to utilize that because you've been mastering it for lifetimes, okay? Yeah, and you're really good at, again, picking up on things that are unsaid, things that are unseen. You're very good at picking up on that. Um, and inner reflection, you kind of get your answers by, again, going within and all of a sudden, it's like, whoosh, the light is on. And you're also here to shine your light. With the sun card, you are here to illuminate um, the world. You are here to bring light and illuminate your own light and really shine that light. And you might notice early on in life that you're very shy because with these two cards in the crow, early on in life, you might be very shy until you really step into your power with the horse because my gosh, you guys, the amount of power that you guys have underneath that, um, you know, because a lot of times when we're super intuitive and we're feeling a lot of things, it can be hard to be around a lot of people because we kind of get overwhelmed at times because we're picking up and feeling so many different things. Uh, so you guys might go through a period of your life where you're quite shy, but you're supposed to come out of that shell eventually as you get older. And 
find that balance between the horse and the sun, which is action taking, taking action and also being super authentic, super open and to really just shine that light without any worry about anything and no longer dimming your light for other people, no longer hiding yourself in order to feel safe. Like you're gonna be coming out of that shell as you get older and as you begin to learn how to better control your abilities and your, your empath nature and how to better kind of filter that so that it's on when you want it to be and that you can also, you know, be the horse and take that powerful action when you need to as well. But you guys are here for a big purpose, okay? So I want you guys to know that there's a big purpose here for you. Sorry, also my gardener's here and I don't know if you guys just heard that, but he just walked by the window. I'm just like, you know, doing my thing. <laughs> Who knows what he thinks I'm doing with my time in my day, but <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so you guys are here to fulfill a big purpose and it, you guys might also be confused about what that purpose is early on, but it is going to get illuminated as you find again, this balance between accepting your spirituality, accepting your, um, intuitive gifts, and then also stepping into your power and realizing that you are here for a big purpose and you deserve to fulfill that and realizing your worth. This is when all the, your purpose is kind of gonna, um, gonna get illuminated basically, okay? This is when more of it is gonna start to make sense for you. So with that being said, let's go into the next few cards that I pulled for you guys. I also like filmed this reading beforehand, so I already had all of these cards um, like picked out, but I needed to refilm it because my microphone was not on me. <laughs> so we already have these cards like ready to go. So basically what we have for you guys, we got the vessel. We also had the hunter, which I thought was super interesting because this one has a horse on it. And of course we have the horse energy. So I thought that that was like incredibly just I don't know, just wild and synchronistic, right? We also have the unseen, which fits into you guys so well because it connects with the blindfold card. Um, we also had shadow come up for you guys. We also had the bardo, which ugh, all of these are just like super fitting. And then we also had the threshold card. So with these, lots of them are very, very connected. If you cannot tell already, they fit in with your guys' reading so much. Um, I wanna start by talking about the Bardo card here, because this one talks about being the all seeing eye and the bridge between the other side and the physical, which is kind of what we were talking about with the earth and uh, crow, like earth and air energy, the magical crow and the physical power horse. Um, so the Bardo is kind of like the connection to the in-between. It's also the eye that's able to see into and peer into the other side. So you guys have incredible psychic gifts for one. And um, you guys probably get very psychic dreams as well. And that's also very connected to the unseen card is that you guys have like an eye, like your third eye is open, okay? Because these both talk about the third eye. It's very open. This also talks about lucid dreams. Like you guys are probably a natural like astral traveler, a lucid dreamer. You guys might've probably had sleep paralysis at some point in your life, which is actually um, a time when you guys are like, about to astral travel, but your consciousness begins to wake up, but your consciousness might be a little bit confused about what's going on because maybe we haven't learned about these things or what these things are. And so if you guys have ever had sleep paralysis, which if you guys chose this pile, most likely you have, or you very much will in your lifetime, that is when you're about to astral travel, okay? And so this is something that you can build and grow on. Also the hunter, which is very connected to the horse card. This is about attaining goals. There's a big purpose for you and you guys probably feel like there's some sort of calling, but we might not know what it is right away, but there's some sort of calling and it's leading you towards um, opening up more the sun because it looks even on this card as if he's chasing the light, chasing the sun. So you guys are supposed to chase the light, chase your calling, right? Like you guys are the perfect threshold barrier between, you know, the bridge between the light and the dark, which is light and dark only means conscious and subconscious. Many people are not aware of their subconscious mind. Um, and they're only aware of the conscious, which is the illuminated, what we see right off the bat, you know, what we can, our awareness, right? 
we're aware of things that are illuminated. We have awareness in them. That's why they are illuminated. You guys are here to illuminate the subconscious, illuminate the things that are unseen, illuminate the things that most people do not realize and most people are not consciously aware of. You're here for possibly even shadow work. Some of you guys might be into shadow work, which is why we have the shadow card. So you are here to illuminate the subconscious. And many times you guys might notice that you've probably been very smart from a young age and you probably love to reflect and sit in silence. You probably love your alone time. Um, and you guys are most likely more of an introvert, but you will have to become a little bit of an extrovert at times to illuminate your light, right? Um, and to share your message. But you're very much of an internal reflector and you've probably been doing shadow work without even realizing it since you were young, which is basically just inner reflection and realizing the real reason why we have certain triggers, why we have certain personality traits, why we have all of these different things. Like you're probably very interested in maybe astrology, tarot, things like that. Okay. Um, also, what is the other card I wanted to talk about real quick? Um, let's go to the vessel because we kind of touched on all of these, which is like you're the bridge kind of between it all. Um, the shadow, you're very aware of your subconscious self. You're very aware of your internal self. And you are here to, again, illuminate that and make others aware of their own and make others aware of basically the mysteries of this planet. Okay, and we also have this vessel card, which you guys are kind of like... Um, you carry like internal gifts that you don't even know about that probably go beyond your awareness. So you're like a vessel here this lifetime with a very particular purpose. Like you're a soul that kind of came down here and was like, I have a very particular purpose and I have certain gifts and you're here to shine those gifts and to illuminate all of that. All right, and we're back. My assistant just came in and she brought me some red eucalyptus from Trader Joe's and like, it's so pretty. So I had to like throw it in the reading. Um, so moving on, you guys, the next uh, couple cards that we pulled for you guys earlier, we have New Moon and Dream Shield. And both of these are like incredibly powerful. I couldn't even believe the amount of power that we're just getting in all the cards here for you guys. But so talking about Dream Shield, this also talks about the fact that your dreams are going to be very possibly prophetic or um, even like telling you deep things, like giving you knowledge. And so if you guys do not dream journal, I'd highly recommend that you guys get a dream journal group one or a group two, because this card talks about the fact that your guys' dreams are going to be incredibly um, significant. This card also talks about the fact that um, your mind is so powerful, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, your mind is so powerful that it kind of drifts to a solution. So for example, if a friend comes up to you and is going through a problem that you haven't even experienced before, like for example, let's say that you've never been in a relationship before and a friend came up to you that has relationship problems and they're going through some stuff, your mind is so powerful and so smart and you're so tapped into the spiritual and the subconscious that you would be able to essentially just know the answer. And if your friend's telling you like, oh my God, he said this, she said this, and then this happened and this happened, I don't know what to do. Your mind is so powerful that you guys would just sort of intuitively know the answer right off the bat and be able to give really good advice without even having gone through um, the same issue or same problem. And you guys probably almost look at other people and you're like, how do you, how is that not obvious? Like, how do you not understand that? But it's because you guys are so used to being able to reflect, be alone and go within. You guys are like professionals at going within. Therefore, you see the unseen. You see what most people completely miss. And so you're very good at doing that and coming up with um, solutions and things like that. Um, and the new moon right here, this is, just honestly such a powerful card because you guys are here to bring in a new energy on this planet and you guys are also very um adaptable very good at change very good at renewal and you're probably also somebody who um gets bored very easily and you enjoy having like something um 
new going on, whether that be like, you know, uh, changing yourself. Like you guys probably go through lots of changes yourselves. One day you're probably like, oh, I'm super into this sort of style and these sort of things. And then, you know, uh, like a week later you're like, mm -mm, no, I need like, lots of color, I need lots of this, I need lots of that. Like you guys are probably somebody who goes through tons of different changes and you guys also probably find that you're attracted to a great deal of things. And it's because you guys have been so developed and so internally reflective that you've kind of gone through and saw why certain people are attracted to certain things and you guys have yourselves kind of almost molded yourself into all these different personality types and all these different people because of your curiosity. You're probably super curious and you go through lots of changes and you kind of see and understand lots of different angles and lots of different perspectives, but it's because you guys yourselves go into that out of curiosity. You're like, ooh, you know, why are people attracted to all, all of these color and all this stuff? Like, let's, let's dive into that. That sounds super intriguing. Like, ooh, I'm attracted to that now. I'm gonna start doing that. And then on the flip side, like a few months later, you're like, oh, I'm attracted to all black. Let's do everything all black, black and white, da 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 da. Let's try that out. And then, um, you guys go into that for a bit, you know, the opposite of color. And um, you guys explore just wearing those sorts of things. And you're like, oh, that makes sense to me. I can see how that correlates to this and how this correlates to this. Like you're piecing together the puzzle um, because you guys are so explorative. You love new, you love change, but it's because you're so explorative, you're so curious, and you love to just dive into this and then that and then this and then that. But it also makes you very, um, able to relate to a lot of people because you've done all the different things and you've kind of explored the deep subconscious and you understand why people take certain actions, why people do certain things. So it really makes sense to you and you're probably um, someone who's very good at forgiving others because you can see why they've done certain things. So you're probably, you probably forgive others too easily to be honest, um, but you might be hard on yourself at times though. So I've also noticed that people with this sort of personality trait can be pretty hard on themselves because they see, they understand themselves so much to where they can see their own flaws, they can see their own this and that, and you know, it can be hard at times to be that way, but yet you're so easy on other people because you also understand why they're that way. Um, and so you, you're so easy on others, but you probably can be hard on yourself at times. But if you just, allow yourself to be authentic and shine your light and realize that nobody's perfect and that you are beautiful for being this way and the fact that you even just have awareness on this is beautiful in itself you'll be able to ease a lot of that um, anxiety and whatnot so with that being said the next two cards that we got for you guys here we have the land between and the divine matrix card one thing I'll point off right off the bat that I noticed about these two cards is we have a 44 here and a four, tons of four energy. Also the 44 does add up to an eight and we have an eight down here. So just noticing some numerology connections here, but the fours mean that you are here to leave like a permanent footprint. So a lasting footprint on this planet you guys are here to make some lasting change. The divine matrix kind of suggests that um, you are a very old soul who's come here again to illuminate. So it kind of repeats that whole cycle. Um, and you're very connected to your higher self as well. And even when I'm looking at this card, I feel like your guys' higher self is coming down to you right now to be like, yes, we're very connected. I'm here. You are your higher self, but a lot of the times it's we can find it hard to connect to that because we're so used to being in the physical world and we're so distracted by the physical. Um, so it can be hard to hear and feel connected to spirit and the higher self and da 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 da, da. But you guys, oh my gosh, very, very, very connected. Um, yeah. And then we have the land between. So you guys are also here to shift humanity's consciousness. So you are here to basically bridge the gap between your new wave of thought, something new that you guys are reaching towards and sort of bridge it to the mainlands, to where everyone else normally is. We are here to kind of make a bridge to what has been forgotten, what has been broken. Um, and we are here to kind of bridge those things, bridge people to the, um, the new sort of 
wave of information that'll be coming in because of course our world is always advancing right but sometimes we advance only in one direction and there's multiple directions to go in you guys are here to kind of bridge the gap between things that are not very widely accepted so with that being said the next three cards that we got for you guys here we have details 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 we have strength and we have a rock bottom and also how freaking crazy that we also got another 44 and there's a four on this card and like it's just crazy tons of 44 energy which again talks about the fact that you guys are here to leave a very lasting footprint on this planet um, and do something that is pretty powerful and create a very solid foundation for yourself and create a lot of security and um, like a very physical impact on this planet. So um, with that being said, let's get into what each of these cards mean. So the details, details card, you guys might be perfectionists at times um, because again, you guys are like kind of smart beyond your years to be honest. And it's very connected to the rock bottom card because what I was noticing in this card is that the rock bottom sort of symbolizes that you guys have been through some major hardships, possibly in this lifetime, but also definitely in your past lifetimes. And this is what's kind of created you and molded you into this sort of old soul that you are now that's very wise and very knowledgeable and you can kind of tap into information very easily because you've almost been through like all the experiences before in your past lives, which is why you're so easily able to see solutions to problems that other people just don't understand and have a hard time navigating through. It's like your, your past lives have already been through that. Your soul's already been through that. And so you're probably wondering like, how do I know this so easily? How's this so obvious to me? Well, it's because you've been there so many times before and your soul remembers all of that. But because of that, you're also very detail oriented and quite a perfectionist, um, which is again, why you might be hard on yourself at times as well, because you guys hold yourself to a much higher standard than most people do. And it's because again, your soul feels like, oh, like I've been such a master in previous lifetimes and we have to relearn in a new body this time, this lifetime. So we might not be exactly where we've been. We might not be the master that we've been in previous lifetimes because we're still kind of catching up to that, that space. You know, we're relearning language again. We're relearning. Our physical body again and how to do things and how to you know you were born here with tons of gifts like tons of gifts on this world um, but it's about re-remembering them and, and relearning them and yes it will be much easier to relearn them this lifetime but still all in all it's all about you know we need to kind of re-remember it um, and we also have this strength card so you guys are very good at like taking on big tasks and big problems and there's times where you might feel like you can take on the world and you also might um, be someone who's very good at um, taking on other people's problems so for example even if you're carrying so much of your own weight and someone else like a friend of yours is like oh i'm going through this huge problem and da -da -da -da, i don't have time for this and you're just like oh, well i'll do it for you like let me take on the burden, like I, I can fit it in. Even though you're probably, you might be at times busier than them, but you're somehow able to take on more, like your mental willpower, because again, you, you've been through rock bottom before and had to come all the way back up. You've been here before and had to sprout so many times before in previous lifetimes that you are able to take on so much more than most people. You are able to handle so much more mentally and physically than most people can, okay? Um, so there's that as well. You guys, which ties into why you guys have the horse coming up for you guys as well, because your guys's willpower, strength, determination is above most people. Okay. So even when you hit rock bottom, it's like, and you guys also might go through experiences in this lifetime where you go through harder experiences than most people, but it's because you're an old soul and if you want to strengthen up, it's kind of like you need more weight. It's almost like um, 
a bodybuilder going to the gym, they're obviously going to be lifting way heavier than somebody who's brand new at the gym who just started. Like someone who's brand new is like lifting the 10 pound weights and they're like, oh yeah, this is hard. <laughs> Whereas you guys who have had so many lifetimes where you've had to, you know, go through these obstacles so much, you're already such a older soul that's able to handle so much more. So you're there lifting like the 80, 100 pound weights, uh, like the dumbbells and you're like, all right, it's hard, dang. And you know, you're struggling just as much as the person who's carrying 10 pounds in, in the case of relativity, but it's still just as hard. So you might notice that you, you go through, um, uh, you probably at a young age will have gone through more experiences than most people have, most likely. Um, considering the cards that we have here. So that is that. And let's get into our last um, few cards, which are some tarot cards to kind of end off this reading. So we actually pulled out quite a few tarot cards for you guys. So let's get into it. So the first one that we had was the Queen of Swords, meaning that you are somebody who very much appreciates truth. And it's very interesting that we also had justice. So the fact that we began with Queen of Swords and we ended with the justice card, you guys are truth seekers. You guys are seekers of authenticity and revealing truth to the planet. You're probably also very curious. You might be an avid reader. You might be somebody who has honestly a very big library in their house at some point with a lot of books because you guys are here to communicate, to reflect, do a lot of mental work um, and do a lot of learning and possibly even teaching at some point in your life. Um, and we also had the seven of wands here. And it was also interesting because we had the seven of wands, the seven of pentacles and the seven of cups, like lots of seven energy, which is kind of like the spiritual teacher, the spiritual master this lifetime. And the seven of wands I took at as, um, you might be, um, like your belief systems might be very much opposed in your lifetime, or there might be people that have very, um, like, like you might have controversial opinions that can kind of trigger other people. Um, and you might be on a path that is not widely accepted by other people. For example, if you are on like a very spiritual path, that might not be accepted by everybody. There might be people that are like, that is absolutely awful. How could you be on a spiritual path? Like there are people that are like that, right? So, and they think it's a really bad thing for whatever reason, but yeah, you guys might be on a path that might be controversial. It might be, um, it might oppose popular opinion at times. And we might be in the shoes of like someone who's a little bit more of, um, not an outcast. That's not quite the word that I'm looking for, but it's kind of like you're on your own individual path. And once you step into your power and stop people pleasing, that is going to be when you're on the right path. Cause you are here to illuminate a new, wave of consciousness to a new, um, a new place. You're here to awaken new ideas that haven't been explored before. So there might, at times you might feel like you're just on a totally different path than most people. Um, and you might have to just really like believe so much in yourself, no matter how much it triggers or offends other people and stuff like that. We also had the seven of pentacles here. When I looked at this card immediately, I was like, oh my gosh, you guys are going to really start to connect with nature as you guys get older as well. And even probably when you're younger, you might really connect with nature as well. Like plants and animals, you probably connect to more than you connect with most people. <laughs> um, also your spiritual health is going to be very important to where you guys will need to have a cleaner diet as you get older as well a much cleaner diet. Also your guys' interest into um, ancient knowledge is gonna be very important as well. And your guys are going to be sort of like, you're here to kind of plant seeds for new awakening and new thought in the future. We also have the Six of Cups. And um, this one makes me feel like you guys are gonna eventually be so abundant one day that you are going to kind of just be like giving to humanity from the kindness of your heart because you just have more than enough to give to others, whether that be in the form of knowledge and wisdom or in the form of physical 
things like money or wealth or things like that. Um, or again, just like knowledge or, or whatever. But you guys are definitely going to be like making an impact and doing something for the betterment of humanity. We also have the Seven of Cups right here. So your interests are very broad and very wide. Like you guys have a wide range of interests and you guys are going to be very curious people your whole lives. You probably noticed that from a young age that you're interested in so many different things. Like your mind is gonna be so multifaceted. You're not one of those people who's just like, oh, well, like I'm just into this one thing and that's kind of just like what I wanna go after this lifetime. No, 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 no. Like you guys are like, ooh, I'm interested in that, 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 that. I'm so curious. And the fact that you're so curious is the reason why you're becoming so developed this lifetime and that you have developed so much in previous lifetimes. You guys are multi-talented and um, multi-interested into many different, um, sorts of things and that's actually one of your gifts that's honestly such a blessing for you and I think you're going to be able to combine lots of those things as you get older and as you discover more you're going to realize how interconnected certain things are and how the fact that you learned about this over here is going to somehow eventually be connected to this over here and you're going to be like oh my gosh like this is making me realize new information because now I know all these other different things like ah um so Yes, and then again, justice is about truth, finding balance and finding deep truths and deep wisdom that's been kept secret or kept hidden um, or that has been undiscovered so far on our planet. So that is what we have here for who you guys are deep down inside, who you really are, who your soul is, group number two. So I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future. And if so, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Alrighty. So group number three, if you guys chose this pile, this is going to be a reading. So let's hop right into it. All right, so group number three, let's get into it. So we have the vulture, peacock, and the bee. We have the staff and the globe right here. So let's get into it. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat is you guys have all air sign element, um, little animal spirit cards here. And that is very connected to the mind, your mentality. You have a very developed mind and mental state. Um, but one thing that I do notice when you have tons of air, sometimes this can fall into the realm of anxiety if we are not focusing on our mental health. For one, you have a very developed mental mind. Very, very, very highly developed. You guys are incredibly smart um, and incredibly um, intellectual, okay? But one thing that is the downfall is that sometimes we can get too much in our head, we can overthink at times, and when we get into our overthinking tendencies, of course that brings about um, spurts of anxiety, um, being too hard on yourself, things like this, and it can end up being to your detriment. Although it is a gift, I will say, being so intellectual, this is a huge gift that you guys have, but again, you do need to be careful about overthinking and falling into anxiety because Sometimes when we get too much into that side, again, like I said, we're putting too much energy there. Um, but a couple other things that I'm seeing here, you guys are incredibly hardworking. But also when you're, we're hardworking, we can tend to be hard on ourselves too. So that is one thing that you guys do need to look out for. But you guys are here, you can take on literally anything. You guys have such a strong mental willpower that you can take on pretty much anything. You are a very tough person who is incredibly strong in the mind, in the body, in the spirit, incredibly powerful. Um, also very creative as well because the bees tend to be incredibly creative. They, they create honey, for example, and they, they, um, they suck the nectar from flowers and create honey by eating the nectar, right? So one thing that you guys need to remember, group three, is that if we're overworking ourselves and letting kind of the vulture take over where we're really overworking ourselves and taking on way too many problems, taking on other people's problems, dealing with our own problems, taking on all the different things, you guys are strong, so you can do that. But if we fall too much in this and we forget to 
get the sweet nectar out of life, which is filling our own cups, nurturing ourselves, enjoying the nectar and the essence of life, your creativity is going to hinder because of course we need the nectar in order to produce the honey. Okay, so that is one thing your soul needs to remember is to remember the beauty in life and soak yourself into the beauty of life. And then you'll notice your creative side, your inspiration, your passion is going to be unwavering. The amount that you could do, the amount of color that you could create on this planet is unlike anything else. And the bee is also connected very much, um, the bee and the peacock actually are very connected to art. Um, being very artsy, having an inkling or attraction to the arts and things like that. So your soul is naturally connected to that and naturally has a talent for that. Naturally, you're somebody who's able to, you know, um, enjoy the nectar of life. And then because of that, end up creating something so beautiful, you know, like the peacock. You guys are naturally very, very, very beautiful. You have a very beautiful soul. But at times, if you guys get, again, too overwhelmed or too hard on yourselves, you end up expressing more of the vulture tendencies, which ends up being, and the vulture's not even a bad card, so I don't even wanna say that. The vulture is literally not even a bad card. It's actually a very, very good card. Um, but the vulture kind of deals with, like we're taking on other people's problems and we're very good at at fixing other people's problems and we're very good at doing the things that other people don't want to do. You know, we're very good at having enough mental willpower to do that. But again, we need the balance between, yes, we need to do those things, but we also need to get the nectar out of life. But it can also get imbalanced in the other way. Sometimes we're focused way too much on the nectar of life. And when we're overloaded with way too much honey, we don't even have the energy to make uh, or the, the nectar, we don't have the energy to make the honey because we're way too overloaded, way too full on the nectar, okay? So, or we're too distracted by the beauty of the world, by the peacock, and we're just too entranced to deal with the things that we do need to deal with. So again, we need a balance between these two energies within you because you do, you you are somebody who has both of those, which makes you incredibly intelligent, incredibly creative. Whew. But we do need a balance between them, okay? It's also very interesting that you guys have this balance because the vulture is almost like this sort of um, darker um, bird that kind of people tend to forget about, right? And so you guys might at times feel very alone when you're falling into this energy, but the times that you're gonna feel inspired and creative is when you step back into, again, the nectar of life, enjoying things, not being too mentally hard on yourselves, allowing yourself to enjoy life, allowing yourself to just be who you are without judgment. Like, let's let go of the judgment of thyself, okay? Group three. <laughs> so with that being said, let me also turn down the brightness here, it's getting super bright. Okay, much better. Um, so we also have the staff, which means again, you guys are incredibly creative. The staff is very connected to fire energy, which means that there's a lot of creative, passionate energy within you. Um, and again, this is gonna come out when you're, when you're sipping the nectar of life and allowing judgment to kind of fall on the wayside and also remembering to take care of the small little tasks that can end up building up and creating a lot of mental stress. We need to take care of the small tasks in order to relieve the small mental stresses from building up too much and making us feel run down. So as long as we keep that balance, our creative spark and our creative passions are going to be so lit up like a beacon that's just leading us into the right direction. You guys are also natural travelers, which makes sense because you guys have so much air here and also the globe. So the world probably is very interesting to you. I feel like you guys are very cultural people, like you love to learn about culture and experience different culture. Um, a lot of artsy people are this way. And again, the fact that we have the globe coming up with all of these air sign, um, elements. You guys are very naturally inclined to learning about history or about culture and experiencing it and traveling and doing these things. So um, 
that's something that I feel like your soul desires to do and will get so much fulfillment out of. And that's one of your purposes this lifetime is to travel and create inspiration through the different cultures that you're experiencing in. Okay, so experience different cultures. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys move to a different country at some point or at least make a big move or travel a lot at the very least um, throughout the planet at some point in your life. Also, the globe can sometimes mean that we're doing something for work that is seen around the world. So if you guys are an artist, for example, you might be doing art that is shown around the world or people around the world know about. It's not just like a local project or something like that. There's something here where it's kind of like, it's, it's global. Um, so whatever you guys are doing for work, I wouldn't be surprised if it is meant to do something on a more global level in multiple different countries. So with that being said, let's get into our next set of cards here. So we're gonna shuffle these cards. These are some uh, like archetype cards and we're gonna see <laughs> what comes up for you guys. Okay, so this is interesting. We have Nectar, which <laughs> tell me right now how freaking accurate that is for you guys. We also have the Father archetype. We also have the Medallion archetype coming up. And let's try to get maybe one more here. Oh. We also have the vision. Oh, wow, that's like really fitting for you guys since you guys are like the artist, the artist group. So with that being said, let's talk about these ones, guys. All right, so let's talk about the vision card first here. So this one basically aligns with being an artist, having a very big vision. So you guys have lots of dreams and probably lots of goals and desires this lifetime. Being able to hold on to that vision will allow you to basically achieve anything. Okay. You guys are also big dreamers. The fact that we have the globe and the vision card here together, you guys are huge, like big, big, big dreamers to the point where some people might tell you to be more practical, which might be why we have the father, um, archetype coming up here as well. So there might be at times, maybe certain people in your family that are telling you like, oh, the, your dreams are way too big. Like, how would you ever achieve that? How would you ever do that? Well, you guys have that big dream and have that big vision. You were born with that um, because there's some sort of purpose there for you. Okay. So it's about following your own vision. And as long as you're following your vision, you're going to attain tons more inspiration and actually live out the nectar of life, which is <laughs> your nectar is going to come through your creativity and following your vision. Because again, you guys are huge visionaries, which is probably also why you're probably very drawn to art, because that's an area where you can vision and visualize things and make them appear and happen. So you guys are very good at visualizing and seeing creative things. And then you're wanting to bring them to life through collecting the nectar, right? Collecting the vision, collecting the nectar, and then whoosh, turning it into the honey, turning it into the physical, the medallion. So turning it into something of value. And this is about realizing your value and realizing the value of your vision and who you are and knowing your worth. That's gonna be very important as well in this lifetime is being able to know your worth. And also not putting like too much emphasis on the material, like follow the material because obviously that is something we live in. We're here to have a material experience. Um, but remember, remember your big vision. Don't get too lost in the practical and the, and the this and the that. Remember your vision at all times. Remember why you're doing this. Why are you doing this? Why do you want your art to be seen across the world? You know, there's, I get a lot of comments from people at times and, um, People who are just like, oh, I want to be famous and have a huge following. Okay, but why? Why do you want to do that? Why do you have that desire? And you know, you guys watching this might be like, oh, well, I don't have that desire, but this is just for example, right? So it's important to ask why? What is the actual vision? Do you want it because your ego wants it? Because it's going to heal something in you? Because if so, you need to heal that way before you'll even ever attain something of the sort, way before you even attain such a vision of attaining fame or, or whatever. Um, but if you guys have a why and you're like, oh, I want a global impact because art has helped me emotionally be able to connect and express and heal. 
And if your why is about that, then that will be spoken through your art. And then when people see that art, they see why you're doing that because that will be a code that's like embedded in that. Okay, and it will trigger that in people. It will trigger that healing because that is why you created it. That is why you did it because it is something of a vision to you that you are giving people the nectar. You are getting the nectar and then you're giving them the honey, right? If we just want to be famous to, you know, and again, this is just an example. I don't mean for this example to be like saying exactly what you are and what you want, but, um, but the desire to be famous just to be famous, that is a self, um, a self thing. That is just you desiring something because it's going to feed you. Nobody's going to want to follow you just to feed you. People follow because they are being fed by you because you are giving them something of value. People are attracted to learning, growing, healing. You need to provide those things if you want people to be affected by your work that you put out onto this planet, okay? You need to be doing it for a, a higher purpose, okay? So, with that being said, <laughs> let's get into the next few cards. Hopefully that was a good example that resonated with, with some of you in some type of way. Again, it might not be the exact example for all of you, but hopefully it provided some sort of value. Um, so with that being said, let's get into these cards right here to get some more info. So we have bearing fruit. What else do we have for pile three? So let's talk about the bearing fruit first and then we'll get into these ones. So in order to bear the fruit, we need to grow the tree. You cannot harvest the fruit the same day that you plant the tree. So one thing to remember is that your soul needs patience and your soul also I will say, we got a lot of pink coming up here, by the way, and a lot of green. Green and pink sort of energy, um, or even like yellow sort of, which is healing the heart, opening up the creativity, opening up the passion. Pink is also very connected to passion and being able to express that through yellow, green, being able to fully express that. Um, putting your emotions, your heart and your soul into something, but also bearing fruit symbolizes that your soul has lots of gifts and you have lots to offer. But let's grow that, let's allow that to flourish. Like you are here to be abundant. Bearing fruit also talks about abundance. You are here to be and experience abundance. You also have a lot to offer, so knowing your value, knowing your value. We also have the uncharted sea. What was I talking about, you guys, about um, traveling? <laughs> like that's something that came up so strong in these cards with the globe and like all the air and we have uncharted sea. You guys are definitely meant to travel in your lifetime. Also now we have a lot of blue on this side, which is very connected to speaking, very connected to the voice um, and expression. So expression could even be an artistic expression in some sort of way, okay? So you guys are natural explorers. If you, the more you explore group three, the more inspiration and passion you are going to achieve in this lifetime. The, the more greatness you are going to achieve in this lifetime. And again, knowing your worth, knowing how beautiful you are, the fact you have peacock, knowing how beautiful you are. Being able to explore without hesitation, the uncharted sea doing something that nobody else has done before. So maybe within art, you're going to develop a style that's very unique to you, right? We also have ears wide open. So this is about um, listening, going along with the flow of life. This is meaning that um, your soul is a listener. And when you're patient and when you're quiet, this is going to be when you hear like your calling or what you're supposed to do next. So if you're ever lost or you have a creative block, being able to calm down and just listen, listen to the earth, listen to the world, listen to yourself. What does your soul really need? What does the world really need? And then through that, so much of your answer is gonna flow through. We also have an angel number 33 right here. 
Um, and we also have a three right here, numerologically. So this is connected to celebration. So your soul is here to achieve big goals. Your soul is here to um, also be rewarded for what you do. To celebrate yourself, celebrate your own accomplishments. And to also celebrate others is what I'm hearing as well. We also have a deep breath coming in. So quiet time is actually going to be very important for you guys in order to develop um, creativity and passion in order to like, for example, if we get writer's block, if you guys ever notice you have writer's block, taking time alone to explore your own mind and not do it in order to be productive. We're not being quiet in order to find productivity. We're being quiet in order to calm ourselves down, to recenter ourselves. And then through that, we can then hear the magic of the universe coming through. So the universe speaks to you when you listen. Certain messages might come through with music, with what we hear, conversations that are happening, what we're watching and listening to, right? So listening to the world, tons of inspiration will come to you through that. And then recentering yourselves, like meditation, incredibly powerful and important for you guys, group three. So with that being said, let's get into our next deck of cards here. Let's see, so group three. All right, so we have self-discovery, ooh. Um, Earth star chakra and heart chakra. So self-discovery talks about shifting what you put your value on, group three. So what do you actually want to do on this planet and why do you want to do it? Again, a huge thing that's coming up is why do you want to do this? Your soul desires you to put a why on it, right? So the ego might want things, but why do we want them? That's another thing that comes up in self-discovery. And um, this is also about going beyond limitations. So for example, if certain people around you put limitations on you or say like, oh, you can or can't do this because like, how would you do that? You know, if, they, if you find that people might belittle you because they believe that it's hard to achieve such and such, but yet you really want to achieve it. This is about you guys having your own self-discovery and realizing your own worth um, and attaching your own worth to something and disregarding anybody who says like you can or cannot achieve something. This is you guys kind of going out of your way to do it anyway. Self-discovery, realizing who you are at your deepest core and then following that and letting that be unwavering so that nobody else can tell you or define you. Once you define yourself, nobody else can like push that out of the way. And so one of your purposes this lifetime is to also do that and to be your own person, be your own individual, right? So... Yeah, and be so sure of that to where whenever you hear other opinions, you're like, that doesn't even matter. It doesn't even phase me. The Earth Star Chakra talks about the fact that you are, your soul is here for a bigger impact and a bigger purpose on this planet. And you're really here to connect back with the Earth, um, to have a purpose in up-leveling like, the consciousness of Earth. Okay, that seems to be a theme coming up for like a lot of people. Um, but yeah, your purpose here is to kind of like up level earth and to give back to earth in a, in a bigger way and to also connect back to your compassion. Like what sort of impact do you want to have on this planet? Your soul's kind of like coming through asking what impact do you want to have on this planet? What is that impact? What does that mean to you? What kind of love imprint do you want to put down on this planet? What do you want to do? Because your soul is here for that purpose. And you might be feeling that purpose. Like for some reason I'm attracted to doing something globally, but I don't know what that is. What sort of impact do you want to have on this planet? And that, that will tie you closer to what that purpose is, what that real purpose is. And then you'll discover how that can actually happen once you have the meaning behind it, once you have the why, because there is some sort of like bigger purpose here. And this purpose is very connected to compassion and love and healing, healing the planet through compassion and love. Okay, so 
With that being said, let's get into our next set of cards here. So let's see. Group three. What other cards do we have here for group three? We have Magic Prayer. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We have Spirit of Place. Let's see if we can get one more here. And Sad Embrace. So this is actually making sense to me because I was kind of feeling a little bit of this while reading this pile is about having compassion for yourself and kind of through healing yourself, you are going to realize how to heal other people because so there's like a, let's get into this guys. There's a deep purpose here for you guys, group three, and it is going to be awakened when you guys go through some kind of hardship. And I don't want you guys to be scared of that or anything because it's not a bad thing. And a lot of us, a lot of us find our purpose through our hardships. That's very common. Okay. And what I'm picking up from this is that there will be some sort of like harder situation that you guys go through or you guys might have already gone through it, um, but that's going to awaken the type of impact that you want to have on this planet. So for example, um, say you're going through a hard time and say music is the reason why you heal and come out of that. Maybe you're going to realize that that for you is a passion that you want to provide that to others. There's some sort of impact that you will experience going through your healing or maybe for example spirituality might heal, heal you and then you're like oh i want to be a shadow worker for others i want to be like a spiritual healer for others da, 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 da. there's some sort of um situation that you are going to heal yourself through and then that will kind of awaken a deeper purpose in you. You're here to really help people and uplift people, especially emotionally, which is also why we had the heart chakra. You are here to heal people through some sort of artistic or global expression that is going to impact people and help them heal. We also have spirit of place. So yeah, you are here to really like, connect with energy and uplift energy. We also have magic prayer. You guys are incredibly connected to the energy of the planet and sorry guys, my camera cut out there. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where it cut out, but I'm just going to kind of um, give you the gist of what we were talking about. So I was sort of feeling that um, there's going to be some sort of hardship that you guys go through, but this hardship is going to awaken what your deeper purpose is. And for a lot of people, going through some kind of hardship is what awakens what they want to do with their lives. And mostly it's because they figure out how to heal. So once you guys go through a hardship and figure out what heals you through that, whether it be music or like spirituality or whatever, you guys are gonna go through something that's pretty hard, but you're gonna find healing through some type of thing. And that for you is going to awaken what your deeper purpose is on this planet and then you are going to desire to bring that healing to other people, other people who are going through a hard time. You're going to want to, um, you know, kind of be a beacon for them like this is what healed me and you're going to be providing healing in a similar way. So for example, if it's music that heals you, you might be inclined to start making music or, you know, if it's like spirituality that healed you, you might want to be like a spiritual teacher. You might have a desire for that, but whatever this is, you're then going to have a very deep calling within you, like a super deep calling that is like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I am supposed to go in this direction. I am supposed to to do this, like your purpose is going to be so awakened and you, um, the subtle energies of the universe is going to be kind of what you guys listen to. There's like a calling with the spirit of place. This is a calling that's coming in and it's going to come in at the perfectly right time. Um, and it's going to really help heal people. Like there's a magic in it that you're kind of like answering for people that people didn't even know that they need it, but it's like you're there to provide it because you discover it through your own sort of healing journey. Wow, guys, this is, this is looking beautiful. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and take our tarot cards to get any last info on this reading for you guys. Also, it is getting so bright in here. I keep having to turn down my camera. It is getting bright today. So 
Let's see what kind of tarot cards we get for you guys. Group three. Who is group three at their core? We have the eight of cups. This, this card talks about healing and walking away from negative situations, walking away from things that do not serve you. So you're kind of helping humanity and yourself of walking away from things that do not serve you. That's part of like who you are is, is that. We also have the nine of swords. So there could be a time in your life where you go through insomnia, but it's because you're going through a sort of like awakening and, and like creativity. You also might, might find that your creativity comes a lot during the night. Like before you go to bed, you might get a lot of visions, a lot of ideas that come to you right before you go to bed. Nine of cups, you guys are here to achieve big dreams. Like some of your biggest dreams, things that you didn't even know existed, things that you didn't even know were real. Um, that is supposed to come to you, that is supposed to manifest for you this lifetime, but it comes, okay, this is very interesting. It only comes when you walk away from that which does not serve you. So certain belief systems that hold you back, group three, you're going to need to break free from. It's interesting that we have two nines right here as well. This talks about a transition, letting go of something. There's something that we need to let go of. Um, it could be people that are holding us back. It could be old belief systems that are holding us back. It could be a combination of all of these or anything else. But your biggest desires are gonna come when you walk away from something. It could be an old job that you need to walk away from in order to go to your purpose. But guys, who you really are at your core you are a snake that needs to shed its skin in order to reveal its truest colors, in order to reveal its truest vision. There's some stuff that you need to shed in this lifetime. It's like you need to shed that old skin that you were raised with in order to rebirth into this magical person that you're supposed to be in order to have that purpose fulfilled. I'm also getting that the beach is really powerful for you guys. It's almost like you guys need to leave sort of where you grew up to go to somewhere that's more connected to you. I'm definitely getting a journey. And I kind of picked that up when we had the globe that we were talking about earlier. And I was saying that it kind of seemed like you guys were gonna make a major move at some point in your lives. That makes sense now looking at these two cards. There's definitely some sort of move that's gonna connect you deeper to your purpose. We also have the page of cups. Oh my gosh, here's the artist right here. Right front and center, you guys, group three. Here's the artist. You guys are natural artists. Natural artist, you're here to have an artistic impact. But again, it is only going to come when you um, find your why. Why are you doing this? And then if you paint the color of whatever artwork that you're doing with your why, you know, so even if you are making music, being an actor, um, painting or whatever, once you do your craft, even if it's spirituality, whatever it is, once you do your craft with your why, because of your why, that is when that craft is gonna be encoded with that energy, that energetic imprint, because there'll be a purpose behind it. People can feel energy behind stuff. If you're doing stuff because you're like, oh, this is my ego and this is why I wanna do it, it's because I want this, I want this, I want this, so like, give it to me. Like, no one's gonna wanna, no. <laughs> We're all only concerned like about ourselves. We need to go beyond the self and do something for a bigger purpose because we want to do it for others. That, my friend, my love, that is going to be when people see that within your work and then they're drawn to it because they find healing in it. You're answering what they've been desiring deep down inside. Let's see, any last cards for group three here about who their soul is deep down inside? That's a lot of cards, but I feel like the top one's definitely speaking out to me, the magician right there. I also feel like this one in the back is sticking out. We have the king of swords. Mm, yes, so there's, again, you guys are very mentally powerful and you guys have all the tools. It's just awakening that within you, you guys have all of the magic within you to fulfill your deepest purposes. Also being very creative mentally. 
very creative mentally is going to be very important for you. Um, you guys are super creative mentally. Ideas come to you very naturally as long as you're open to that. Once you get back into your balance of not being so hard on yourselves, when you guys are hard on yourselves, this is going to be when you are not hearing your own ideas, your own creativity will be kind of blocked. So it's about, again, finding that balance and all of a sudden it's going to awaken and you're going to find that natural creativity that you guys have once again. That natural creativity is going to be reawakened. And then it's like you guys are flooding with ideas. You could write it down constantly. You could do it constantly because you guys are in that flow again. You guys are slowly letting go of the harshness that you guys can, can get to sometimes. But it, it's because you guys have such a mental talent. You guys have such a strong mind, okay? That's why that even happens. So it's a, it, it's a blessing in disguise, really. <laughs> so... That is what we have here for you guys, group number three. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future. And if so, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Alrighty, so group number four, if you guys chose this pile, this is going to be your reading, so let's hop right into it. Okay, wow, group four. <laughs> this is nuts. Okay, so we have the ram, cosmic egg, golden egg, and the scales. Guys. <laughs> They, uh, these two cards right here are from the Animal Spirit Oracle, and these are the only two cards that aren't animals. They're eggs, which of course turn into animals, but like, what? What? You guys got both of them. This is just, it's blowing my mind. We also have the ram here, which is connected to Aries, which is the first sign of the zodiac, and then we have the eggs, which symbolize like a new beginning, the birth of something, and Aries being the first sign is kind of like the birth into the zodiac. And it's interesting that we also have the scales, which is connected to Libra, which is the exact opposite sign of the ram. So it's the seventh, um, seventh zodiac sign, and it's kind of like the midway point. So this is nuts. This is nuts, you guys. It's the first of the second half of the zodiac, and then we have the first here. So you guys are all about new beginnings, new energy. You are here to be a pioneer, a forefront, um, the beginning of something new. You guys are like the originators. You guys do not like following um, things that other people have already done. You know, if people have already done something, they're already doing something, you're kind of like, eh, I'm already bored of that. I want to do something that's brand new. I want to, like, you guys are all about the new energy, hopping into the brand new, being the beginning of something. You guys are like the leaders, the natural leaders that do not like following. You guys like being the birth of the new stuff. You guys are all about the new and you guys probably also love change and um, new ideas. You guys are probably very adaptable, okay? So let's talk more about this. The fact that we have the cosmic egg right here, the zero symbolizes that there's infinite potential and that you guys actually have all elements within you because um, usually these cards are connected with different elements, but the zero just kind of connects to it all. It's like infinity. It's infinite potential. It can be whatever it wants to be. So you guys also don't necessarily have a very particular purpose this lifetime. Your soul didn't come here with a huge blueprint of things that it absolutely needed to do. You were kind of here being like, let's experience and let's just see what happens. And I'm not going to put a huge plan attached to my incarnation. It's kind of going to be an infinite just whatever I want it to be, an infinite potential. We also have the snake that's wrapped around this egg. So this symbolizes Kundalini. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of you guys have a Kundalini awakening at some point in your lifetime. Uh, this also symbolizes going from the bottom to the top. It's like in alchemy, going from the base chakra to the top chakra. And it's very interesting that we have golden egg next. So we're working from the very bottom and reaching the golden crown sort of chakra. So this is going through a huge awakening this lifetime. Um, this symbolizes, it's sort of the metaphor of turning lead into gold. You guys are here to birth into a beginning, which could be any beginning. You guys like could come from any walk of life, but you guys are here to start from the bottom and get to the top to attain big goals, big dreams, big desires. You are here to alchemize any negativity into pure enlightenment positivity. 
you guys are here for transmutation. Like one word that I would give to you guys, group four, is transmutation. You are here to transmute lead into gold. You are here to transmute blah into something beautiful. You guys also might be people that can easily take something that you got at a thrift store and redo it into something that's so brand new that it's just like whoosh, unimaginable. So very creative for one group four. You guys are incredibly creative and you are here to bring about new energy onto this planet. You are here to take the old energy of this world and alchemize it into something brand new. You are visionaries. You are incredibly good at visualizing and incredibly good at seeing the potential in things. You're incredibly good at that. Um, you are here to bring in more balance onto this planet. You are naturally somebody who knows how to balance. You know how to create good and leave behind a good footprint on this world. Um, whenever you guys are not following newness and new creativity, you guys probably feel stuck and lost. So one thing about these cards is that any time that you are falling back into the old and not pushing the envelope and allowing your creativity to explore new things and create new things, anytime you get stuck and stagnant, that is when you are going to feel the most anxiety, the most confusion and things like that because you guys are naturally supposed to be chasing the new, doing the new. And even the new can also be again, like I said, taking the old and refurbishing it into something new that can also be a connection to this as well. You know, taking old ideas and making it new. <laughs> taking something old like tarot and then doing something new by using it um, on YouTube. <laughs> and not exactly in that way, but I was just using that example in my own life. But yes, these are incredibly, incredibly powerful cards you guys group for. My goodness. Also, this is about you guys nurturing yourselves in order to crack open your full potential. You might not even realize that full potential. You might be um, in an egg, in, inside of a shell for quite a bit of your life before realizing that you can crack open and become so much more. So your lifetime is also gonna be about realizing your potential because a lot of it might be hidden from you, especially early on in life because you're still in the egg, you're still within that shell. So you're kind of feeling like, oh, like I'm just a regular, regular person just going about life, you know, da, 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 da. Sometimes you might even feel insignificant. But guess what? Once you break open that shell, you realize what you are inside. And guess what? With the infinite right here, it means you are creating yourself. So you get to be whoever you want to be, group four. You get to turn yourself into whoever you wanna be. And right when you crack open that shell, that can be who you are. You are like the infinite creator here. Um, and we all are, you know, in a way, our infinite creators. That's what we all are. We are all are our own, um, our own artist of life, right? But for you guys, you have like a, just an incredible sort of combination of guards here that point to your infinite potentiality. And again, like I was saying, I don't think you guys came here with a very particular blueprint of life about how you wanted to live your life you guys kind of click uh bleh. you guys kind of came here with a blank slate um okay that's like way too many cards we're gonna reshuffle those so we're basically gonna shuffle these archetype cards and get some more info on this reading for you guys but we're gonna try to get you know maybe like four four archetype cards so let's see what comes up for you guys group four the archetypes for group four. Here's one, the Bardo. Ooh, that one came up for like group two, I think. Let's see what else we get for you guys. We have this one, we have this one. And let's take these two that were right here. We have the mask and the offering. Okay. These are pretty powerful, oh my goodness, okay. 
Let's try to get one more actually so that we have balance <laughs> on this on this reading. Let's try to get one more for group four. I'm really feeling this one. We have Thanatos. All right, so you guys are here to break open your shell, okay, group four? So the um, apocalypsis card is really sticking out to me and also the fault line card. So you guys are probably going to be pretty optimistic early on in your life, but there will eventually be a point where you have to crack open your shell. Okay, and this is gonna happen through an apocalypsis sort of moment. Um, and this card is not bad, so don't think about it in that way. Um, but this is about you guys kind of breaking open. There's gonna be a, a time or a moment in your life where you need to come out of that shell. There's, there's gonna be this breaking open moment. And whenever we break open, like even a shell, even birth is one of the most difficult processes ever. So there's going to be a birth with you in your lifetime. So this rebirth of breaking open your shell, which sometimes when we're broken open, it can feel it can feel gnarly, right? Because we're breaking open our shell, our comforts. That's all we've ever known. And then all of a sudden we step into this new world and we're like, whoa, what is going on? So it's almost like this shedding and you might feel uncomfortable. So there's going to be a moment in your life where it kind of feels uncomfortable because you're kind of being broken open. You're being called to step outside of your shell. Um, but this is going to be your moment of awakening. This is going to be your moment of coming into who you really are, coming into your ultimate potential. Whatever you've been incubating yourself to be is finally being broken open. The curtain is being revealed. The, the play is starting, right? So the curtain falls back and the stage is then revealed, right? So that's also kind of connected to the mask right here. So you are creating yourself into whoever you want to be. So remember group four, that you are somebody that has tons of infinite potential. Whatever you end up feeding yourself is what you're growing into. Okay. Um, and this web over here, the Thanatos, this is connected with the creativity of life. You are weaving your own web. You're also very connected, like your third eye, there could be a third eye awakening, a spiritual awakening at some point in your life where it's like, wow. And then, you know, we sort of come out of our shell. We come out into the, like I, this new identity. You guys are almost going to go through an identity shift maybe in your lifetime as well, where you really step into who you are and you, you come out of your shell, you come out of all of that. And it's just like, we're letting go of the mask and we're being fully, truly ourselves. But the mask isn't even a bad card in this particular deck. The mask also talks about who we desire to be and who we're creating ourselves to be. You know, if we're in a play, like who, what persona do we want to be? What main character do we want to create? So it's almost like you guys are creating your own play on this planet, this lifetime. And it's really up to you who you desire to be and what sort of life you want to have. And so realizing the law of attraction, manifestation, how that really works, that's going to play a huge role into it. We also have the offering card right here. Um, and this is like, what sort of impact do you want to have on this planet? Also, the offering can be you guys awakening an inner talent and lending out a helping hand to others. For some reason, I'm seeing that you guys are going to desire to bring more balance to the planet and to really step into your power in this lifetime. Your soul really wants to step into its power, but you guys, again, are gonna be in the shell for a bit, and then each of you will have like this sort of breaking open moment. And it's almost like a kundalini awakening, a third eye awakening, seeing more truth on the planet and what, what your truth really is. Okay, so with that being said, let's get into our next set of oracle cards here. So group four, what else do we have here for group four? I'm really feeling this one. We have shining through, being broken open, and then psh, the light just shines through. The light starts coming out, group four. So yeah, there's definitely gonna be a, a breaking open sort of moment in your lifetime. 
for you to be able to shine through and then higher view. So then we're going to be able to see so much more, being able to see what we really desire, the direction we really want to go in, the impact that we have, that we want to have. This is a total ascension, spiritual awakening um, sort of alignment that we have going on here. So who you really are is so much more than you even perceive right now. So much more. You might see yourself as just an insignificant little egg, little person on this planet, but guess what? Your soul, psh, once you break open this egg, you see that, that that was like a cosmic golden egg. You weren't just you weren't just a regular egg. You were the cosmic golden egg and you break that open, you realize that you are so much more than what you can imagine. But you need to go through this breaking open moment in order to really see that, in order to understand that. So with that being said, let's get some more cards here. This one, we have new moon. That one's a really powerful card. I'm also really feeling this one. We have Silver Wolf. Wow, both of these came up in, a, in another reading too. Let's try to get maybe one more here. And we have Self Discovery. Wow, all of these have already come up before in different, uh, different groups. But yeah, so Silver Wolf is very connected to intuition, spirituality. Silver is very connected to the moon. The wolf is all about, um, you know, speaking your truth as well, owning your own internal power. Self-discovery is about discovering who you really are internally and also being able to define that. Um, and the new moon is very connected to adaptation, growth, change. You are somebody who's going to go through some major changes in their lifetime. And you're also somebody who's very good at accepting change and dealing with change. Um, at least you will be as you get older and as you start to come out of your shell, you're going to realize how fun change really is. Um, and you guys are probably somebody who's gonna go through some major transformations in their lifetime. So, with that being said, let's get into the next group of cards here. So group four, more information about who group four really is, who they are deep down inside. Details, details. <laughs> Some of these cards we've had come up for other groups too. It's so funny. There's like so many cards in these decks. Ooh, we have commitment here. Ooh. And then we have ride the wave. So you're somebody who really likes to go with the flow, for one, with ride the wave. Also, relationships might be very important to you in your lifetime, who you really are. You're somebody who's very loyal, incredibly loyal. You go with the flow, but you are, yeah, incredibly loyal to those who you love. This card's really speaking out to me. Yeah, you're also somebody who has a very fresh perspective on life. You're somebody who might be a perfectionist at times with the details, details. Also, I'm getting scripting energy from this. So scripting is going to be very powerful you, powerful for you in this lifetime and becoming detailed, detail-oriented about what you really want in your lifetime and being able to claim that without letting anything or anybody hold you back or tell you that you cannot achieve something. Knowing the details about what you want and being able to commit to that. You guys, you have incredible loyalty to commit to what you really desire and what you really want, and then to be able to kind of go with the flow. You're a very easygoing person who I think is very easy at forgiving people and to kind of go with the flow of the shifts and changes of life. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get some, or or some tarot cards now instead of some oracle cards, and let's see any last information for group four about who you really are. Ooh, okay, so we got the devil and the death card, which don't be scared of either of these cards. There's actually really good meanings underneath um, their surface. So let's see what else we get. We have the king of wands. We also have the knight of swords and the seven of wands. Okay. So group four. There's going to be a time in your life where you guys have to overcome 
your attachments, like either being attached to your shell, being attached to um, a person or certain things that are actually hindering you and holding you back. So there's certain like safeties that you guys have or certain comforts that you guys have that actually hold you back and they hold back your potential rather than give you and promote your potential. There's certain things that you will have to shed in this lifetime and break open and crack open and, and release yourself from. And then you're gonna have to go through kind of like a big shift. I think you're also somebody who has a talent for seeing this in other people, being able to see attachments and being able to say, no, we need to cut that away. Like he's literally cutting the cord to the negative attachments. Um, you guys will become very good at that and very skilled and talented at that of cutting away these old attachments. And that'll be something you're able to help other people with in your lifetime as well. Breaking addictions, breaking habits, committing to yourselves, yourselves to something that's very important. Um, we also have the King of Wands right here. And this means that you guys are full, like filled with um, tons of creativity and passion and lots of willpower. The King of Wands also is a lot, a lot of willpower and a lot of like charisma as well. Especially next to the Knight of Swords, there's charisma between these two, lots of charisma energy. You guys are probably gonna be very funny and very humorous as well. I'm getting like funny, humorous energy. You might not even realize that you are that way, but people find you very funny and humorous to be around, like a very fun, there's a very fun energy about you, group four. We also have the seven of wands here. So you're somebody who doesn't like conflict. But as you get older, you're gonna be able to stand up for yourselves a lot more in a healthy way as well. But you guys, I feel like kind of are scared of conflict and you're scared. There's a time when you're kind of scared of people seeing the real you, but again, you're gonna to have to break open out of that. And once you do, people see this like funny humorous side of you, but you're gonna to need to go through like a big transformation, a big cracking open um, to realize that you have that within you. You have this like really funny, really charismatic side of you that people are really drawn to and really attracted to. And it's very, yeah, it's very attractive. It's very magnetic. You have a very magnetic energy about you, group four. So that is what we are seeing there. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading group number four. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future. And if so, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. All right, so group number five. If you guys chose this group, this is going to be a reading. So let's hop right into it. All right, so group five, whoa, what a powerful, fantastical sort of energy we have going on. We have castle, dragon, firefly, and rose. Whoa, I am getting fantasy vibes from this group, to say the least. Um, also a very powerful energy. First off, I see definite like old soul energy with the dragon and the castle also a very romantical energy there's like a romance a beauty about you that's very magnetic um and it's like a spark of inspiration for others you are also somebody who gets these sparks of inspiration and sees the beauty in life with dragon you guys have this ability to see the beauty in life to see the magic in life to see the inspiration in life okay and people kind of get inspired by you as well i think you leave like drops of inspiration sort of wherever you go but there's something ancient about you very connected to ancient times, even Renaissance times. I don't know, just something ancient and fantasy-esque, okay? Because this, like all of these cards here are just very magical and fantasy-esque. So, wow. You're also this ever-unfolding rose. You're discovering more and more. There's a very curious energy about you that gets very excited as you kind of peel back the layers of life and see more. There's also an incredible optimism that you hold within you, although... You're someone who I think is very spontaneous with, that gets very spontaneous sparks. You're someone who 
you don't necessarily have this like continuous like constant inspiration and energy you're someone who i think needs to retreat into its castle and then has its own like just spurts of inspiration that come at the most unexpected of times we can't really navigate them and that'll be like when you get this spark to like work and do this and do that so you're someone who would most likely benefit from working from home or having your own business because you get these sort of like random sparks and they're not always necessarily consistent but they are there um, but there is also this magic about you and you're kind of here to just experience the world you are here to get sparked by different things and experience and the more that you kind of go out and see the world and peel back the layers of the world and allow your curiosity to guide you that'll be when you get more of your sparks but i also get that you guys need your own internal like retreat time and beauty is going to be very important to you this lifetime like living in a beautiful environment making your environment beautiful being surrounded by flowers or being surrounded by things that make you feel like the aesthetic is beautiful you guys are very attracted to aesthetic um and that makes your spark go off as well as when you see the beauty in this world and you guys have a knack for seeing the beauty and finding the beauty of this world and of this planet i wouldn't be surprised if you guys are the type of person that has their home decorated very well because you guys are the like beauty seekers and the beauty seers aesthetic i think is going to be very important to you um if you guys wear makeup, I'm getting that you guys are also probably decently good at makeup or at least very decently good at like decorating or style or seeing stuff like that. Like your environment is going to be very important to you. The environment that you're in. It's kind of what gives you inspiration. I feel like you guys are somebody who doesn't get a get inspiration when you're not in a good environment. Um, you very much get your inspiration from the environment that you're in. Okay. So that is one thing I'm seeing there. I'm also seeing that it's very important for you guys to be protective over your energy. You are such a colorful light that people want to be around that it's very important for you guys to be protective over your energy. You guys also have a very powerful, strong energy. But I feel like it can be put out um, when you're not around the right people or if you're not protective over your energy. You guys need to definitely be mindful and watchful over your energy otherwise it will be sort of put out just like a candle just being blown out um, so for you guys it's important to be protective over your energy and to recuperate that energy when needed but again tons of romance i'm getting tons of romance here yeah i think love might be important to you this lifetime group five love might be very important for you and being properly romanced or even romancing yourself through the environment that you're in um, and doing nice things for yourself. Nice things. So with that being said, let's see what other cards we get for you guys. Group five. Group five. Who is group five at their core? We have the cave. We have the temple. Wow, both of these are incredibly fitting for you. Let's see what else we get. The mother, the forest, and the box. So, yes, there's many layers for you guys to peel behind to reach your truest inner potential also you guys need to watch out for building up walls whenever you get hurt because you will need to tear those down later so i think that you guys kind of get overly protective at times and you guys might end up building walls that end up holding you back or end up um, boxing in your potential and boxing in your light whenever you get hurt because it's your way of protection, but you need to watch out because of course, 
will eventually need to, in order for us to be able to shine our light, then we need to tear down these walls that we've built. In order for us to experience the suppleness of life, we then need to tear down those walls. We want to end up getting close to somebody romantically. We're going to need to then tear down those walls. So watch out about the walls that you build yourself. You can build yourself a castle that is easily, you can go in and out and it has like a lock on it, but do not put yourself in a box. Do not put walls up. You can become a strong dragon, but do not put walls up that need to be t torn down if you want to feel closeness or connection. So do watch out about that. We also have the mother archetype here. So you guys are incredibly nurturing, incredibly caring. Um, and again, we have the pearl in here. So there's something here about beauty and aesthetic that's going to be very important to you, being in a beautiful environment. Um, what, I want to talk about these two next, actually, the cave and the temple. So it is important for you guys to be able to retreat in order to recuperate your energy. That's going to be very important for you. And also treating your body as a temple. That's also going to be very important. You're going to realize that as you get older, that certain foods or substances are hindering you or dimming your light or stealing your energy. We must treat the body as a temple. We must nurture ourselves with proper food and nutrition. That's gonna end up being very important to you as well. As you get older, you're gonna realize what an impact that that has on you. Also being able to retreat and making your home like a temple is also gonna be very important to you. I'm feeling like you guys are, are people where you need your home to be your temple. You need it to be your realm of recuperation, okay? Just like a dragon, every time we see dragons in films, they always are surrounded by like gold and jewels and they kind of like collect it within their like castle that they have and that's what they love. That's kind of like you guys, I think you're very attracted to nice things and to aesthetic. It just makes you guys feel good and inspired. Okay, and then with this card, I actually wanna read you guys the definition of this card because it's very, it matches you guys incredibly well. Um, but I feel like the the actual like reading the definition is going to be more powerful than me talking about it because they just lay it out so well and it's really relevant so what it says on the book is consider for a moment your earliest memory of the forest it's likely it included all the mythic dynamics of this archetypal space a little bit of fear a little bit of enchantment perhaps losing your way perhaps discovering a secret mystical treasure such as the magic of the forest it requires first that you enter it, and then that you get lost within it. You may think that there's a path to lead you straight through, but soon enough you'll be on what is known as the pathless path. There are tricksters here, defense foliage and entanglement, but equally present are the glimmers of fairy light and friends among the trees. You're on an adventure now, and there's no turning back. So embrace the dim light and moving shadows. Whether literal or imaginal, the brave or whether literal or imaginal, brave the forest and get lost getting found. Get lost getting found. So that's like the forest because when you navigate through the trees, there's no like straight path. And that's kind of like resembles your life is there's no straight path to your goal that we, we get lost and there's going to be obstacles, but equal as the obstacles, there is also magic and um, enchantment that leads you to where you're going so that's it's I just thought it was so fitting for you guys so this is about peeling back the layers of fear coming out of the cave in order to get lost in order to be found so that's kind of like a symbol of your guys's life is getting lost in order to get found anytime that we get lost it means we're exploring somewhere that is been unknown to us. We're unfamiliar with it, which is why we're lost. So anytime that you guys are lost, you are actually sitting at the seat of your ultimate potential. And that's going to be like sort of a definition of your life. Whenever you get lost, it is because you're sitting at a moment of ultimate awakening and ultimate potential where you can discover undiscovered treasure, where you can discover an unwalked path and make a brand new path for yourselves, okay? So it's just about releasing fear. Your whole lifetime is about releasing fear and getting lost in order to get found. In order to find lost treasure, we must get lost ourselves because obviously treasure wouldn't be lost if it was located somewhere where we knew where it was. 
Okay, we must get lost just as the treasure is lost in order to discover the lost treasure. I hope that's making sense. So that's kind of about you guys discovering your purpose and discovering who you really are is about getting lost in order to discover someone who's not yet been found. You are somebody who is totally brand new, who has not walked this earth before you have your own unique gifts and the reason why you're lost is because those unique gifts you haven't seen them anywhere otherwise we would have found them within ourselves you are somebody unique and we must get lost in order to be found so anytime that you feel confused it's because you're sitting at your ultimate potential and you're about to find a beautiful gift of life so with that being said we're going to get into our next oracle cards so we are going to shuffle these ones right now so let's see group five what else do we have for group five here I'm really feeling this card a grand symphony ears wide open And healing the heart. Okay, I'm also gonna change my battery really quick. My battery's about to die and I don't want it to cut out in the middle of me talking. So let me go do that real quick. All right, so you guys are here to heal, to be loved. Um, I'm getting romance also from this one. So you guys are here to really experience romance this lifetime. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys are attracted to relationships and learning through relationships. Um, yeah, and also healing the heart. There's something, there's some sort of past life healing that you're here to do this lifetime. Um, we also have threes that are coming up pretty significantly here with the master number 33. This is all about celebration and finding harmony. So learning how to how to celebrate more, how to enjoy life more. How can we bring in more enjoyment and more fun into our life? And then listening, having quiet time is gonna be very important and music is incredibly important for you guys as well with the Grand Symphony. Also listening to music, I think the lyrics are gonna really stick out to you and music's gonna be incredibly healing for you this lifetime. Things that you connect to, lyrics that you connect to. Let's see what else we get for you guys. Group five. We have the grandmother moon. And we have, what is this card? Eh, my nails are not letting me pick it up right now. <laughs> we have eagle medicine. Okay. So... Nurturing yourself is going to be incredibly important. Also, Grandmother, Medi Grandmother Moon, um, this one talks about you guys probably have a very old soul energy, so don't be surprised if you guys are the type of people that like to go to bed early or you like to do like, I don't know, like old soul things like reading, writing, you know, things that people don't normally do. Um, People probably look at you sometimes and they're like, oh, you're like a grandma already. So Grandmother Moon kind of talks about that sort of like old soul energy that is very connected to just grandmothery things like staying home and cooking and like having an inside meal and, and like, yeah, like lighting candles and reading and like just doing like the old stuff and like going to bed at like 9 p.m. I'm one of those people, but that's very connected to what this card is all about. We also have eagle medicine and eagles are about soaring up and seeing the higher, the higher picture. And so for you guys, another part of who you really are is being able to see the higher, the higher picture, the higher view, higher perspective is what I'm trying to say, actually, the higher perspective. So... For you guys, one thing that you're going to be growing into more and more in your lifetime is getting the higher perspective on things, higher learning. Uh, this is all about ascension as well. Uh, being able to pinpoint exactly what you want and seeing things very particularly, seeing the beauty and stuff. This is also highly about seeing the beauty because eagles are very good at soaring way above and then seeing like little gems down below, like little pearls, right? So you guys are very good at finding the beauty in things, very good at finding 
stuff and and transforming it into beauty you're very good at that as well transforming making things beautiful you have a knack for that so with that being said let's get into our next set of cards here so group five let's see oh my gosh we have another listening card so there's something where you guys really need to open up your ears and listen to i think the universe has been trying to speak to you and you're also very good at for one you might be also very you might also just naturally be a very good listener but for some reason i'm also getting in those cards that um to open up listening more okay so the elephant naturally has heightened senses we also have music look at this there's music coming up in this card too music is going to be heavily important for you guys group five my goodness we have so many music things listening to music is coming up so much um possibly even creating music but elephants are extremely wise and they have very heightened senses they have huge ears they have a huge nose like they have huge senses and so um being able to quiet down and utilize that is going to be very important also this rescue card the dragon and castle really stick out to me the fact that we also have rescue and the fact that we started off with dragon and castle so you guys are here for healing and taking situations and finding the good in them, finding the optimism, finding the beauty in things, rescuing things. I think that you guys have such a big heart and you desire to heal people because um, you have so much compassion. There's a lot of compassion for you, like that within you. Um, I'm also getting that you guys like to escape a lot. You like to escape the real world and escape into more of a magical sort of thing that you're creating for yourself, which is probably why you're much of you're very much a homebody, I'm getting homebody energy from this. Um, and you probably love to create your own sanctuary and cave and temple that you can kind of retreat back to and sort of heal yourself. We also have magical prayer. So there might be even a moment in your life where you're like praying to be found or sort of like rescued from something. This is talking about how your angels can hear you, like magical prayer and rescue. The universe hears you. They hear what you need. Um, and sad embrace as well. There, there's like, you are really here to help uplift people, uplift them emotionally, help kind of like rescue people that are maybe feeling off. Like you're here to really like add beauty to the world and help other people see the beauty in this world. Help other people create beauty in their lives to find that. Like that's a huge emphasis that we're getting here in these cards. So with that being said, let's go into our next few here. So let's get some tarot cards on here, group five. Let's see. We have the Magician coming up. Oh, what a powerful card. We also have the Moon. So yeah, you guys are an incredible homebody, very high intuition. We have the Ten of Wands. And we have, what is this one? Ten of Swords. Ooh, let's see what else we get. And then here is our last one. So we also have the Six of Pentacles. You guys are incredibly giving. Oh my goodness. But you need to remember, you guys, group five, to not take on more than you can handle. You guys are natural like mothers. I think, yeah, you guys had the mother um, archetype. So you guys naturally want to help people. Um, but I think you sometimes have a knack for taking off biting off more than you can chew. So definitely be cautious of that because I think that you guys overwork yourselves at times and it ends up being quite strenuous because you guys are so willing to help others, 
so willing to give your time, energy, and resources to others. You need to worry. You need to be cautious and conscious about burning yourself out because that's something I think that you guys are kind of prone to. So remember to relax and to nurture yourself. It's not always about nurturing others and doing all that you can do. We need to remember to nurture ourselves, okay? Um, but yeah, you guys are incredibly in tune with your intuition. With the magician over here, this talks about your ability to really conquer anything, to really make your dreams happen. Um, and whether you realize it or not, you have all of what it takes to really achieve whatever you desire. And this also talks about having, being born with um, specific gifts that you're very talented at, like specific talents that you guys have. So this lifetime is all about awakening those and nurturing them so that they can become the best that they can be. So yeah, that is what we're seeing here. You guys are just incredibly giving, incredibly generous, generous people. Um, so that is what we have here. Group number five, just remember to relax um, and nurture yourselves as well. And just stay in a good environment and you guys will be good to go. So group five, that was very, very, very beautiful. Um, I also want to say, yeah, we have some air energy and some infinite energy here. So very intellectual and also just very well-rounded and kind of like you have the potential to do anything. You have all the elements and the magician talks about that too. So you really have the ability to accomplish anything this lifetime. And that's something that all of us have the ability to do. And that's something that the cards really reiterated in these readings. And I loved it. So that is what we have for you guys, group five. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future. And if so, I'll see you guys in my next one.